छोटे रूम की कोशिश होगी बेकार अब की बार चार सौ पार दिस वीक पीपल ऑफ मॉलजीव के बल लैंड स्लाइड विक्ट्री टू इस्लाम प्रेसिडेंट मोहम्मद मोइसू This election result reflects a significant shift in the Maldives foreign policy particularly since Moizu took office last November which has been characterized by a stronger turn towards China and strained relations with India. The People's National Congress led by Moizu secured 66 out of the 93 declared seats comfortably achieving a super majority in the parliament. But the question is what does this victory mean for India and how will this impact the regional dynamics hi i'm shreya sabaje and you're watching the big debate the maldives renowned for its luxury tourist destinations boasting pristine beaches and exclusive resorts in recent years emerged as a geopolitical hotspot in the indian ocean however following the maldivian government's india out campaign and prime minister narendra modi's visit to lakshadweep The country witnessed a notable decline in Indian tourist arrivals, dealing a significant blow to its tourism industry. Despite India traditionally being the primary source of tourists for the Maldives, recent Google data indicates a stark shift, with the Maldives not even featuring in the top 10 destination for outbound Indian travelers. What's more, the Maldives is not even among the top searches for those planning a holiday. Feeling the repercussions of Moizu's anti-India policies, Maldives tourism bodies called Indian tourists an indispensable force in the success of the Maldivian tourism sector. An extended apology for the derogatory remarks made against Prime Minister Modi and India by Mali's top leaders. To mitigate the damage caused by strained relations, a prominent Maldivian tourism body even announced plans to conduct road shows across key indian cities in an effort to lure indian tourists back to maldives furthermore criticism against moizu's anti india stance has been vocalized by opposition parties who at times emphasize the enduring alliance with india earlier this year a joint statement highlighted the importance of india for the maldives long term development and security and cautioned against aligning too closely with beijing Regardless of the significance of India's long-standing ties in maintaining regional stability, President Moizu, widely regarded as a pro-China leader, called for the deportation of Indian troops from the island, and I'm quoting, "There will be no Indian troops in the country come May 10, not in uniform and not in civilian clothing." Despite India's historically pivotal role in safeguarding the sovereignty and security of the Indian Ocean, Moizu chose to follow in the footsteps of Beijing while on one hand he asked India to withdraw its troops from the island nation on the other he made a half hazard visit to China where he held talks with Xi Jinping and signed 20 key agreements including a secret defense pact but the irony here is that a government shouting from the rooftops about a handful of indian soldiers in the maldives in conspirational terms is causing up to china which is known for opaque arrangements For Moizu, the sovereignty of Mali appears to be selectively compromised when engaging with a transparent democracy like India. He is rolling out the red carpet for a communist authoritarian China. As per experts, Moizu's second-term presence opportunity for Beijing to expand its military presence. It can also be a challenge to India's regional dominance and maritime security. Another fear that experts have been cautioning about is the spread of Islamic radicalization in the archipelago nation that again can be a threat to India's security. Maldives elections were believed to be a litmus test for President Mohammad Morsi's plan to push for closer economic cooperation with China. His anti-India and pro-China campaign won the day. And Beijing seems to be fully rejoicing with the outcome. Beijing declared that it fully respects the decision of the Maldivian people in seeking further deepening of Chinese relations with the archipelago nation. Chinese Foreign Minister Ma Feng is working to strengthen bilateral relations, expand bilateral cooperation, and further strengthen China's overall defense cooperation relationship, to further build a stronger Chinese military unit, and to better equip the two nations. Ever since Mohammad Morsi was elected in the presidential election last year, Morsi stepped up the island's outreach to Beijing, a development. New Delhi has watched with concern. Moizu also called China one of the closest allies and developmental partners of the Maldives. 
This was also the first time that a Maldivian president skipped India as the first port of call after being elected. Immediately following his election, Moizu visited Beijing where he held discussion with Chinese President Xi Jinping. Upon his return, he said, and I'm quoting, we may be small, but this does not give them the license to bully us. We may be small, but that doesn't give you the license to bully us. While he did not name any country, the remark was seen as a swipe at India. Since taking office, the president has awarded major infrastructure contracts to Chinese state-owned companies, including the construction of thousands of apartments on disputed reclaimed land. It even allowed a Chinese spy ship to dock in Mali. And now his party's election victory will give Moizu more leeway for his China-friendly policies. The strengthened mandate will now enable President Moizu anti-India to advance policies aligning with his pro-China stance, raising concerns regarding Mali's growing proximity to Beijing. This electoral outcome not only consolidates China's influence in the Indian Ocean, but also presents opportunities for Beijing to expand its military presence, potentially impacting India's security interests in the region. Maldives even inked a defence pact with China mere days after demanding the withdrawal of the Indian military personnel from its territory. While the specifics of the agreement remain shrouded in secrecy, it is known that the Chinese military will furnish non-lethal military equipment and training to the island nation. Positioned at the nexus of Asia, Africa and the Middle East, the Maldives holds profound geostrategic significance. Its strategic location renders it a vital node in maritime trade routes and a potential military outpost for regional powers. While India's long-standing ties with the Maldives have been instrumental in maintaining stability in the region, China's expanding influence threatens to disrupt this delicate equilibrium. China has been eyeing the Indian Ocean for a long time via investments through debt traps and through alliances. Whether it is Pakistan, Myanmar or Sri Lanka, China has systematically erected ports and military installations across the Indian Ocean. Under Xi Jinping's leadership, China has become a rogue state, causing up to client regimes such as North Korea and Pakistan. Whether the Maldives choose to align itself with the excess of this roguery like Pakistan, which has witnessed a downward spiral ever since its close ties with China, remains to be seen. However, such decisions will have far-reaching repercussions, including the risk of alienating New Delhi. And this is something Beijing knows and is possibly crafting. After his return from China, Moizu took another swipe at India, saying that the Indian Ocean does not belong to a specific country. Echoing the same stance, China has often made that the Indian Ocean does not belong to India. Another issue that experts have repeatedly warned about is the increasing threat of Islamic radicalization in the Maldives. Moizu's win in the Maldives comes at a time when concerns about Muslim radicalizations are on the rise. As per a report by the Lori Institute in 2022, during the tenure of Moizu's party predecessor, Abdullah Yamin, from 2013 to 2018, the Maldives ranked highest globally in terms of per capita individuals joining the Islamic State. This lenient approach towards militancy and radicalization could persist and India must remain vigilant regarding the escalating radicalization trend in the Maldives. Meanwhile, India's reaction to these developments has been measured, emphasizing the significance of constructing engagement with its regional counterparts. Thus far, India has adopted a restrained approach downplaying these strains in the bilateral relations. In fact, it has continued with aid for the Maldives irrespective of the India Out campaign, showcasing that it is historically with the Maldivian people that the Indian government has ties with. Nevertheless, New Delhi cannot afford to overlook the strategic ramifications of the pro-China Maldives as it can be a challenge to its regional dominance and a threat to its maritime security. India is looking beyond and recalibrating its strategic approach, evident in the recent commissioning of the naval base INS Jatayu on Minicon Island in Lakshadweep, strategically positioned north of the Maldives to bolster its operational surveillance capabilities. 
Currently, the friendship ship is birthed off the Maldivian coast, but Moizu's attitude towards this relationship will determine the immediate course of India-Maldives relations. The risk of small nations being drawn into the power struggles of larger players may seem insignificant until the threat of bankruptcy comes knocking. In the midst of these geopolitical shifts, the Maldives has already begun seeking favours from India. With a debt of approximately $49 million owed to India, Mali is now actively seeking debt relief from New Delhi. History serves as a reminder that India has repeatedly helped its neighbouring countries that have fallen into China's debt trap, as the cases of Sri Lanka and Nepal show. Even though the Maldives is currently steering the Chinese ship, it should not forget that it is India that is the first port of call in times of calamity. Whether it was economic crisis, tsunami or recent unexpected crisis of COVID-19 pandemic. It was India that generously provided aid to the Maldives under its neighbourhood first policy, including domestically produced vaccines. Now, however, the Maldives is led by a head of state who seems inclined to neglect India and embrace China. What could possibly go wrong? All it takes is another crisis, say a tsunami, for Moizu to understand the geo of his geopolitics. But until then, let us just hope for smooth sailing in the Indian Ocean.